Our enterprise passed out in 1985 from batch number AB27. I welcome from my daughter of Allah to the director and CEO of Hindustan Group of Institutions and accountable manager of HIT Education College, Dr. Anand Jaika Parish. I welcome you, sir. I welcome to the guest of honor Mr. K.P. Krishnan, CEO of K.P. Kero Samsar Chennai, sir, he also our entrepreneur from batch number 6. He passed out in 1977. I welcome you, sir. I extend my hearty welcome to director Mr. Ashok Pradis. I welcome you, sir. I welcome here to all the principals, heads of the institutions, parents and dear students. Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Keeping this in mind, all our graduates will prove better in society as they are product of HIT Education College. This batch has admitted in HIT Education College by 2017. Total entrance was 71 that time. Finally, 69 students has continued the program and successfully completed the course. Amongst them, 50 students is from mechanical stream and 19 students from and you yeah. Our college is having approval by DGCA, the yeah. Ministry of Civil Aviation, for AV licensing, and we are providing dual degree BSc in aircraft maintenance engineering and BSc in avionics from our Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science, and program is approved under UGC. So those who studied here. They are getting two certificates, one DGC approved and one is UGC approved. Our students are having three different kind of examinations. First one, three years course is divided in six semesters of six months each. At the end of every semester, there is examinations, AB semesters. I am highlighting the result of these graduates. First semester, 95% student pass in first attempt. Second semester, 96% student pass. Third semester, 92% student percent. And fourth semester, 90% student pass. Fifth semester, 95% student pass. Sixth semester is the final semester and that is not very practical, it is specifically for our job training. During our job training, we are familiarize them and we are giving details knowledge about aircraft, engines, systems, avionics and advanced maintenance system. We have our own facility in the campus which is approved by DGCA to provide our job training on Dornier aircraft. Learjet aircraft, Cessna 152172. This is our approval. However, we have helicopter also, Robinson. Our students having full exposure during the job training. Overall semester toppers of three years from mechanical stream is Mohammed Osama S. He is from mechanical stream. B is overall top of the building system. Apart from them, the students are going to write the DGCA examinations. Earlier it was paper system 1, 2, and 3, and then panel, and are there after AV license. 
nowadays modular examination systems introduced by DGCA and our students are writing three times in a year which is conducted by CEO of the DGCA in Delhi March, June, July and October sessions and proudly announce the DGCA result of this graduates out of 69 64 student has passed DGC and Jamaica. And with this we are leading currently in India with a pass in DGC and Jamaica. Total 93 percent of students has cleared DGC and Jamaica. Amongst them, seven students has cleared all the modules. Five from mechanical clear all their eleven modules and two from avionics clear all their ten modules and they are eligible for primary love. Seventeen students has cleared six or more than six modules and another forty students has cleared up to five modules. The toppers in different sessions in all India levels from both mechanical and avionics stream Mohammad Yusava from 138 batch Nilofar Nisha from 136 batch Akash Tiwari from 136 batch Kamil Rasal S from 138 batch Vignes S from 138 batch all from mechanical stream and they completed their all the module examinations during the college study. Shiva Kumar B and Mohammad Absar from 137 batch clear all their modules from avionics stream. So congratulations to all of them. As I told, we have BSc program also for the same students. Out of 69, 67 students opted BSc, two students already having degree before joining this course and all the 67 have successfully completed their BSc degree and they awarded with the graduation certificate by 11th January 2021 the program through online and during BSc graduation day the five student awarded as a rank holder again Muhammad Osama, Kamil Arasan, Muhammad Aksar, Sivu Kumar and Kila Vasi. Dear students, today you are here and you are going to start a new journey of your life. You see in front of you sitting on dais is of your goal. You are going to be, become future aircraft maintenance engineers and you are going to serve in aviation industry on different aircraft. The two persons with us, both of them are our alumni, Mr. Gopinath and Mr. K. B. K. Krishan. Krishan sir has passed before 1980-1977 and he holding all the license including YASA license also, right sir? And uh, Gopinath sir passed out in 1985 and uh, from mechanical history and sir is holding all the license and he served in different airlines as head of the engineering and currently sir in GMR. So this is a good example for you. Your uh, study is not going to end here. Even you should be more sincere for your coming time. My best wishes to all of you. And uh, I pray to Almighty for your bright future. Thank you very much.
missed out on a lot of college life. Otherwise, you would have been enthralled with uh, coming to campus every day. But since that has not been there, I know it has been very uh, hard on you uh, to be online, to attend some of the lectures and programs uh, online in uh, the last uh, 10 months or so. But now as you go out into the world as alumni of HIT, I congratulate all of you and your teachers and most of all your families. So congratulations to each one of you for achieving all this dedication to achieving your career goal. HIT since its inception in the 70s has been unique in its approach by offering job ready courses such as aircraft maintenance in airframe and avionics, mechanical and avionics, along with the BSA courses from Hindustan University and will continue to innovate and offer such courses to prepare industry ready graduates. HIT offers a thorough boarding to make its graduates Hindustan warriors. The warriors who have character, compassion, courage and perseverance. The graduating class must exhibit these qualities at all times, in times of adversity, especially Hindustan warriors will be job creators and not mere job seekers. More than 15% of our alumni want to create startups and create employment. As the CI mentioned, HIT has achieved 93% in all India DDC exams, which is remarkable, outstanding. And it all goes to the excellent team of faculty and of course all your efforts which you have put in to achieve this. We have seven achievers in our midst who have cleared all their DDC exams. Akash Tiwari, Ilofar Nisha, Mohammad Abshar, Sivakumar, Vignesh, Tamilarasan, Mohammad Usama. Congratulations to each one of you on your excellent performance. And of course, the others don't be disheartened. You will also get your turn very soon. So be uh, working hard to clear the papers. And uh, we are always here to help you find uh, and assist you in whatever way possible, even if you leave this campus. We have gathered here today to celebrate achievement, recognize success, and confer well earned honors. This is a day you've been working toward for years. This is the day your hard work, the late nights and stressful final exams all paid off. It is a joy to be with you today and to be among the others present here to congratulate you on this milestone. There is something that every parent and the management have in common. That is nothing makes us more proud than your success. Nothing matters more to us than your well-being. And our greatest wish as parents and educators is that your generation will do better than us and be better than us. The Hindustan Group of Institutions contributes to society through education, service and scholarships. But our greatest contribution to society is you, the graduates we send out into the world so that you can make it better. Nothing makes us more proud then when our graduates use the skills and passion they develop at HIT to benefit their communities, their organizations and our society. Education helps you to be the light that dispels darkness, to be the voice of truth when it's most required. Today I want to reflect on what Hindustan Group of Institutions is and how it has realized the vision of our late founder chairman Dr. K. S. G. Burgess make every man a success and no man a failure. As part of tireless stewardship towards this great mission, Hindustan has created a new paradigm for higher education. One designed to equip students for collaborative leadership in any human endeavor and to make positive differences in our world. Hindustan founded in 1966 by our illustrious chairman, Dr. K.C.G. Vargas, on realizing the need for institutions offered non-formal technical education and was aimed at imparting quality education in the fields of engineering, aviation, architecture, law, liberal arts, management and many more. It currently caters to over 18,000 students 
and several thousand men and died for you. In our sixth decade of service to society, it is evident that our system of education at Hindustan integrates the best of the old and the millennials by advancing human creativity and societal development and attending to the challenges facing our communities. This is evident by the fact that over 10 service robots were developed by our robotics faculty at the Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science University during the peak of the pandemic and were successfully handed over to the Tamil Nadu government as a CSR project entirely. This is especially thanks to the efforts of our director, Mr. Ashok, our faculty at the Mechatronics and Robotics uh, at the Hindustan University. While mentioning the above, I would like to inform the August audience that our University Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science is ranked with A grade by NAC by NBA for its programs at NIRF 107th rank and 20th rank for engineering and architecture programs. HITS was awarded the best private university in Tamil Nadu by the Indian Express Group and presented by none other than the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Honorable Thirupi K. Palaniswam. Likewise, our constituent institutions, KCG College of Technology, Hindustan College of Arts and Science, are ranked by UGC and NAC as A plus institutions and have received the AICT CIA award for the best industry linked institute several years in a row. This is a mere reflection of the highest standards of quality expected at our institutions, each one a portal of excellence. Well, you will ask uh, why and how is it possible? These are only possible due to the continued support and guidance of our beloved founder, chairperson, Dr. Elizabeth Burgess. She encouraged us to establish these edifices in this location around 12 years back when we had a shift from the Gindi campus and then we built this beautiful campus with her supervision and guidance. Her message is amply clear that she expects HIIT to increase its footprint by achieving academic excellence and be a landmark institution. So dear graduates, looking back to the sense of success and completion concerning all that you have accomplished in your time at HIIT, today is evident that you are capable of sustained thought and work. I am proud of the graduates of HIIT and I am proud of the great things you will do when you leave here today. Of course, you are going into the aviation industry, which is in very exciting and challenging times. Though the industry is back to, say, around, I think, 80% of the pre-COVID capacity. I know uh, uh, experts from the industry are here. They will enlighten us more on the challenges which are in the industry. And of course, the international sector is around 50% or less, is my estimate. The cargo business has grown and so has the airport sector but in the last one year it has been a very unique situation and I think we can most happily forget what has happened in the last year. And uh, don't worry, you will always have opportunities in this industry. But this has given all sectors ample time to rework strategies, show more empathy towards the workforce shut down unviable businesses and start afresh with many unlimited new possibilities, especially in healthcare and many other sectors. And of course, the aviation opportunities will be many and even if you don't see a job immediately, continue to clear all your papers and work in the industry or even enhance your skills which are very much required or even go into higher education if that's what your calling is. Always be optimistic, have confidence in yourselves, surely you will be rewarded. If nothing else, we are always here, you can always come back to us and take our guidance for your career. I thank all the parents, all well wishers who have continuously reposed their faith in the Hindustan reputation and expect that you are with us for the long term growth of HIV Mission College. So let me once again congratulate all the graduates, the chief instructor, Mr. Mishra, and his team of 
dedicated uh, faculty and staff on this proud moment. I once again remind our young graduates that you as Hindustan warriors must exhibit strong character, be compassionate, have courage and persevere in your careers. So let me conclude. We congratulate you. May God bless each one of you. Jai Hind. Because India being such a vast demography, we have an inherent, what do you call 
or a strength be within us, we are not dependent on export market, we are not dependent on any overseas uh, uh, business to come and uh, support us. We have got inherent strength, we have a huge captive domestic market. And aviation in the last decade has seen a considerable growth, almost you can say 20% growth year on year we are seeing it. It got interrupted during the COVID, not to worry about it. It should be over, we should be quickly over to that is the reason, as uh, Dr. Vakis had just mentioned, India has picked up very faster than in comparison to the rest of the countries. In fact, today our uh, aviation is all, and the airlines is already back to flying almost 70 80 percent of the normal pre-COVID level we have reached. I am confident that we will be reaching the 100 percent level very soon, before end of this year. And then thereafter we will embark on our the journey that we got interrupted, which will be a 20 percent growth year on year. Once the aviation growth, there is a huge demand within the, which is the growing middle class in India. So, you guys, are, all, all the students are coming out at the right time. I feel that it's the right time you are getting into the market where you are starting a new journey. It's a promising time. It's up to you all how to make the best of it. So, as far as opportunity is concerned, India will offer and continue to offer, especially in aviation, a very good opportunity for all of you. As the aviation industry grows, all the associated in, uh, activities along with the airline, when the airline grows, the MRO grows, or when the MRO grows, many other businesses grows. So there is a good time. It is definitely a good time for all of you, not and for the parents here who are here with anybody, not to worry. Give your give your children a little bit of time. I am sure they will come out. Patience is required. Aviation is a very glamorous world, but at the same time, <coughs> it will go its cycles, go up and down cycle. Keep, keep your perseverance on, keep patient, it will grow. It will grow and you will see the fruit of it. And we and Krishna is actually a benefit of a beneficiary of that fruit. So you have examples in front of you. Definitely it will, it will be from a decent promising field. That much I can assure you. Now coming back to my from my own personal, there are a few things which I would like coming from an aviation background I want. Uh, caution you or if you have a foresight in the way where, where, where you should be and what you should be focusing on. Aviation is a very glamorous goal, don't get carried away. Keep your cool head and have a goal in mind. And so again I am saying this, I see many people, many students or even my juniors who are there, when they have a goal in mind, when they have a big picture in mind, I have seen them, when I see them after 5 years, 10 years, and they pursue that goal, kept in mind and pursue the goal, they are reached somewhere. Those people who didn't have a focus, they, they tend to remain at the average level. Try and keep, have, have some goal with yourself. Whatever it could be, however, you, there are many opportunities today, not just getting in airline only. There are MROs are coming up. As I said, M -M -M. Government of India today has given a special incentive and focus on MROs. Until today, even today, in fact, in the total volume of MRO business in the country is about 1.4 billion dollar, out of which 800 to 900 million dollar, million dollar, million dollar is being done outside the country. So there's a huge gap, and government has realized this, and they are, they are bringing in a lot of incentives to develop the MRO industries within the country. So a, that's why I'm saying it's a lot of potential, and I would like to go forward and see some of you also becoming a job creators in the form of entrepreneurs. That's also a good opportunity if you see today government is also focusing on startups, as assisting in various startups and where else can be a better opportunity within the sunrise industry of aviation. There are many opportunities that where you will find you, you need to get the right idea and there's no type of money in this country. If you have the right idea, you will get the investment and you will get the investment that you require. That's what I've seen and that's what my experience also has been. So, I'm sure, I, I hope to see that some of you are at least getting into the role of an entrepreneur and being a job creator also rather than being, being employed. I'm not saying that they're being employed is not good. Yes, that's also an equally challenging good. I have spent about I know, 30 years being employed. Now I have this business where I employ about over 500 people are being employed in my model. We are the largest private sector model in the country. A turnover of around 250 crores plus. We, I manage the business very well. In fact, we, we, uh, there used to be a time when the 
Indian aircraft used to go outside the country for service. Today, I can tell you, outside the in fact, almost 25% of our in, uh, revenue came from foreign aircraft coming into the country to be serviced at our facility. So that's where India is changing. And you can see that it's happening. And even that's also happening with our competitors. So definitely, it's a, a sunrise industry, I can say. I'm a great believer in it. I, you need to have passion to be in this field. That's something which I want to tell you very particularly. As I told you, aviation can be sometimes very demanding and it's cyclic, but you need to be very passionate about it, whatever you do. Especially it takes a lot of passion. If you see anybody you talk to in aviation, any entrepreneur, they are out there, they are for our passion. Not for making money. My, my advice to you all is chase success, chase excellence, not money. Money will follow. The success what you will get. Don't go and chase, from my personal experience, I'll tell you, don't chase money. Chase excellence, chase success. Please do that and you will get your money when, you, when it comes to income. It will reward handsomely for you. So please do that. In fact, I tell you today, my, in, my, in my house also alone, it's an aviation house, I'll say. My, I have been in this field for the last 30, 35 years. My wife is also in aviation. She's a pilot. In fact, if I ask her, who oh, you want, you want to fly? But she's, she flies a silent seven. So you want to fly or you want your husband? She will say, oh, I want to fly. You know, that, that is the passion that, that the people have. So you must have that passion. It's very important. My son now has interest in aviation. So he's gone into a different field altogether. That's fine. You choose your field, let him go into which way you want. But he must, if he didn't have passion, I think I would not encourage him to be here. So passion is very, very important. Definitely, this is something which you, you need to do it's a long run. Have a goal in mind. And then, aviation is unforgiving in terms of safety. Because any other field, you have some tolerances. Okay, make an error you can make. But in aviation, it's just zero error. Zero error, zero tolerance. So, it's unforgiving. Never compromise on safety. Whatever you do, take pride in what you do. Because, that, that spot is actually, you will be known by what you work you do, not by your name. What you leave behind, what you work you do, how you complete your work, in whatever, wherever you are, you will be known by that. Especially here, we are more of skill based. It, more than the knowledge, once C plus here, in aviation aircraft, maintenance and engineering, it is 70 to 60 percent is skill, 30 percent or 40 percent is knowledge. So, well, how you finish your job is actually, it matters a lot. And I go and see, or anybody else see, when, when the work is done neatly, it gives a confidence. And when you do neatly, you will also, also safety is built into it. You need to make sure that you, you, you do it safely, you do it properly, take pride in what you do, you will automatically end up doing that in an excellent job. And with that, the other things, all success will follow for you. This is all what I am saying is from my experience, where I have seen myself and what I have seen from others, when I go for assessment, what is the priority that I give? These are some of the things, there are many more lessons that you want, but some of these things which are specific to aviation, safety, never compromise, passionate. You want to basically have a goal in mind. If you want to see, there are many hundreds of students today, uh, or even workers, staff there, but if you want to be, be a cut above the others, for that you need to uh, you need to be have a goal in mind, and if you are seen, you work with that goal in mind. I have seen so many of my friends, colleagues, juniors, when I see them later for five years, I remember yes, he has worked according to the goal that is in mind and he has achieved where he has been where he wants to go, he is able to go there where he wants to go. And India is, apart from being a, uh, fortunate that we are working in, we have been in India, we also, what is our biggest wealth, wealth population? So, we are the manpower support provider for all the Middle East countries, or not only Middle East, anywhere in the world, that's one of our prime experts. Anywhere in the Middle East, you will not find, and uh, in any airline you go, or any airport you go, you will not find a pilot who is who's not from India, or an engineer who is not from India, or a technician who is not from India. In fact, the whole of Middle East actually, more than 50 percent staff are actually from here. Because we, they are recognized as uh, our, our caliber, our quality of work that we do. So that is where we need to focus on. You know, we, what we put in the body, you do, the works will come to you. Also, we, 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 
gives me immense pleasure to be coming back to this institute where I'm an alumni 45 years back. I would like to take you back 45 years. That was the parent institute, which used to be known as HETC, Hindustan Engineering Training Center, where we had a small facility and it is today grown leaps and bounds by the hard work of the uh, his family per se and the support from the parents and students. Without that, this could not have been achieved. The facility today is a campus. We were in a small facility. Okay, I still remember those days. We had a very small facility and uh, uh, Vergi sir used to come on a big impala car, which used to occupy half the space. None of us would like to come in front of him because our day is gone. It will be AK-47. Those are the days that we learned. We, this institute gave us a basic uh, knowledge in aviation maintenance. And it, it paid us, as Ashok has already mentioned. And uh, today, I am very satisfied with our aviation has given everything that I have dreamt of. I become an engineer, I run it, people have worked for me. So there is no end to it. As he said, only thing Ashok had already stressed and taken all my words which I have tell you, passion is very important. Faith and candidness. These are the important thing in aviation. Because this is a faith industry, right? It's a faith. Nothing can be done if the aircraft goes overseas, I mean on the air. No repairs can be done, no correction can be done. The engineer trusts the pilot. Sorry, the pilot, I'm sorry. The pilot trusts the engineer when he signs an aircraft and gives it to him. The engineer trusts the mechanic who has done the work. The, the passengers on the airplane trust the pilot to take them from point A to point B. The whole management trusts everybody. So it's a trust industry. You make a mistake and you hide it up, that is where the problem starts. It is known in the aviation industry that problems can be there. The aircraft is designed in such a way that there can be problem day one. But there are primary, secondary, tertiary systems to take care. That is why the aircraft is called foolproof because fools are engineers. It's, it's, it's protecting from the engineers. But I, let's not become those. Let us become people who do an honest work and if a mistake is made, do tell that so and so mistake has been done. Nothing is going to happen. One mistake is not going to put that machine from the sky down. It's been designed with redundancy to keep that. Mistakes can happen. The error is human. The designer knows that there can be mistakes. Now, all of you who have done this course, as Mr. Misra said, wants to become aircraft maintenance engineers. Well, very nice. But what will happen if some of you cannot become do we have a plan B? What is aircraft maintenance certification? The engineer who does is the last job, right? He does the last job. Before that, there's a plethora of events that's happening. There's a planning department, there's a purchase department, there's a material department, there are various other support departments. Not necessarily that everybody has to become an engineer. How is planning done? It's very, very important that how is planning done. You need to know how is planning done, how is the maintenance check is planned. We want all of you to see as aircraft maintenance engineers. So that's coming to your mind and then you start deviating when you don't become an aircraft maintenance engineer. Don't those guys. There are hundreds of jobs in aviation. Aircraft engineering or certification is only a small segment of the whole maintenance. One can be, uh, become a stores guy, there is a lot of requirements in store, how to store an item, what is dangerous goods, how to study dangerous goods, what is preservation of material. So there is a plethora of activities in store. There is a whole lot of activities in purchase. Vendor or which vendor I will buy, which item I will buy, where to buy, how to buy. So there is enough activity. Planning, how to plan a check, make sure that all the material is available for the engineer to sign up. 
make sure that uh, uh, it comes on time so that the aircraft is not getting grounded. So this is what the planning person does. So there is there is an opportunity to become a planner in an airline. There is an opportunity to become a stores guy in an airline. Then there is a quality department. You can become a support section in the quality department. There is a safety department. So there is there is no end to the kind of job. Don't get disheartened if you don't become engineers. It's not possible in my class there are only seven of them as engineers and few mechanics. Rest did not uh, come into aviation. But today as Ashok has already given up, 20% growth is what is predicted for this region. There's a humongous growth in aviation possible. Government has identified that. They are giving uh, uh, support for the MROs and the airlines. Airports are being identified so that uh, MROs can be set up. We could become an entrepreneur tomorrow, set up a small MRO, small rocket science. So there are various, various uh, field in maintenance that is available. It is not only aircraft maintenance engineer. I just want to tell you because everybody, everything gets into everybody's, every student's mind that I will become an aircraft maintenance engineer, I will get four figure salary, five figure salary. Sashuk rightly pointed out, salary is immediately will come. When we all started, we had nothing. Three years I was unpaid apprentice. You have to be unpaid apprentice. You need to have your focus, you need to have your patience, pass your papers, you do your exams, it will come. If you don't do your work and you expect something to happen, it's not going to happen. There's always a thing, you have to be 50% body, therefore 50%. Right? So let's do a 50% and go with this at the right time to assimilate knowledge. Today you have so much of avenue to get knowledge from the web, from the Google. We could not, when we were doing the exam, there was no Google. I could not get an answer from Google. Today you ask Google, shout or uh, say, hey, please let me know, you get an answer. So you have avenues, you have a much better time. Similarly, with the aircraft, has also become a complex aircraft today. And a complex aircraft will need specialized approach. Let's not do this generic approach. Okay? We need a specialized, passionate, and, and calculated approach for maintenance. Today, how many of you will go to an MBBS doctor? Everybody will say, I want an MD, I want a pediatric specialist, I want a pediatric specialist. I am not going to just an MBBS. Similarly, in aviation also, you need specialists because it's a specialized field. And one of you need to specialize on something or the other. Even the institute should probably think of doing a short course for uh, getting them employed. A small course on planning, three months course on planning, how to do engineering planning, how to do stores material support. I mean, that will give them a job opportunity. This is happening in every, every educational forum be it engineering, be it technical. Employability becomes an issue because the curriculum is not uh, really making you to become employed. The curriculum is making you to make sure that you have the knowledge to acquire the skills to become employed. Right? So they are only basically imparting you a, a generic knowledge of everything. You need to specialize. There are so much of jobs available, so much of opportunity available, patience. Nothing is going to happen tomorrow. If not day after tomorrow, wait. Patience. We all waited so many years back when there were only two, two organizations which used to employ aviation personnel, Air India, Indian Airlines. It took three years for us. Today you have more than ten organizations and, and many MROs, private MROs, uh, employing aviation personnel. Your future is very good. I congratulate all of you for the hard work that you have done. But what you have today is only a small speck of the knowledge of the knowledge what you have. Don't get carried away that I've done my ME and I know everything. We know nothing. Dr. Kalam with all this one, they said I didn't know nothing. Right? We have, we have not learned 1% or why 1% trillion of the knowledge available in the world. But every day is a learning, do assimilate and success will follow. Have be very honest and passionate. Very, very important in aviation, passion. As uh, says, if aviation I have a passion, that's a passion. I would want to be an aviator.
that will not take you away from your goals. Sincerity. Very, very important to have honesty and sincerity. You make a mistake, please tell your superior I made a mistake. Nobody is going to, when I did a mistake, I was called, when I broke a spark plug. I don't know how many of you know, when you want to open a spark plug, you can't give a force, you are supposed to give a jerk. I did not know it. I broke a spark plug, my engineer came, he did the same thing, said this is how you break and this is how you don't break. Right? So, you will have to learn practical, there is no shortcut to practical experience. You have, you have so much of equipment lying in this institute, put your hands on, take the right tools, dismantle, put them back. Only a good mechanic can become a good engineer, I can trust you, I can guarantee you. Because otherwise, a good mechanic, if he is not becoming an engineer and you are a bad mechanic or becoming an engineer, you will have your day. Right? Become good mechanics first, then you are good engineers. I wish you all the very best and I am sure in over a period of years with the opportunities available, all of you will be an aviator to be seen. Good afternoon. Who started the first airline in India? The first private airline in India to the graduates. Yeah, Air Asia I think started by our founder, Dr. KC Jivagis. Yes. After J.R.D. Tata, the first one to start in the last 20 40 years was Dr. KC Jivagis. He started with the Boeing 737. This is the beginning story. And the engineers we find over here were part of that journey as well. Very good afternoon to our most respected uh, CEO and director, Dr. Anand Jacob Burgess, our most respected alumni who have come back to school, who are with us today to share their wisdom and knowledge which they have learned over the past so many decades. I call them the golden alumni. The Golden Alumni because they existed when our founder was there. So it is a privilege to bring back the Golden Stars back to our campus. It is a special privilege. Today our group is headed by our chairperson and chan uh, chancellor Dr. Elizabeth Burgess. As many of you might have seen her a few times on campus, today she is the group and because of the COVID situation we are keeping her very safe. So many of you would not have seen her in the last year or two but we have to take all precautions because of the COVID situation. So I think uh, our CI, Mishra has done an excellent job. I think we all need to give him a round of applause for a great job along with his team of instructors and who have delivered today two batches during this COVID period. My biggest concern, or rather our biggest concern, was that the graduates, the COVID graduates, the COVID students are suffering the most. Right from kindergarten all the way to even doctoral candidates. No classes, everything is online. No laboratories, everything is online. But life has to go on, right? But when it comes to the culmination of your efforts, you have paid so much money, you have invested in uh, so, uh, so much time, your teachers have spent so much time grooming you. But today, the day when you graduate, when you receive your degrees, your diplomas, it is also done online. But your batch is very lucky because Corona has given a small window of an opportunity where you can walk up and receive uh, your best moment of your life captured receiving your degree or diploma. So I think you are very lucky that way that you are here today to be a part of this wonderful event. So around 30 years ago when I was a student like you studying engineering, the final exam, uh, the, my classmate who was in front of me in the exam hall, just like this, social distancing, you know. This was the distance approximately. And I was sitting behind my friend. And 
suddenly I was uh, I was writing the exam and the uh, teacher, the invigilator walks past, walks past me. He stops in front of the my classmate in front of me, and uh, he looks at him for some time. My classmate is very engrossed in writing, and his hand is up. He's lying like this, and he's writing the answer script. The teacher stops, looks at him. His hand happens to be like this. He lifts up his hand like this, and he says, "Dave, that was my friend's name. What is this? What have you done?" Dave is engrossed in his paper. He snaps out of his writing process, and he looks at the invigilator, and he is in shock. What do you think was on his hand? He had written the answer script on his hand. The entire answers for the exam was scribbled on his hand in bit technology rather. Really microscopic, even I had noticed. But he put his hand because for whatever he needed to be a copy, he had kept it, he had copied. And then the remaining answers, he knew the answers, so he forgot that he had written the uh, uh, things on his hand and he put it up and he was very comfortably writing the answers. And the teacher saw his hand and lifted it up and he said, Thambi, inna paide? So he said, uh, sir, Manichikra sir, Tappa Panta. So he said, Parala Panta, we will get it, we will get it. Then he called another invigilator. He said, sir, Ravi, come on sir, Ravi sir, come on sir. No, but we will not do it. No, but we will not do it. No, but we will not do it. And then he called one more instructor. So it was a full panic situation and we were all wondering what is happening. You know, but I could see that this guy is caught. <coughs> of course, uh, he was... Uh, Take out of the hall and then he got suspended. At 30 years from now, of course, he's uh, one of the top uh, uh, businessmen in Delhi. He's working with Samsung Aviation Industries. So eventually, he did do well. But the point is, drawing a parallel to aviation, your job, technicians, engineers, especially aircraft maintenance engineers, the parallel I'm drawing here is that this hand will show what you did wrong. That is what aviation is all about. You cannot escape it. That snake will come through and find you. The documentation systems developed by aviation industry is one of the best in the world. And it points to the direction which make the mistake. So the only way out of it is to attend class which you have all done. Second of all, listen to your alumni who have spoken today. Third of all, listen to your like maintenance engineers, your superiors, and you will be fine. And sign off when you have done the job. Not before that, not too late, not too soon. So, this is a very important lesson. At the end of the day, it takes a thousand nuts to put a plane in the sky, one loose nut to bring it down. There are two meanings to that. One, one thousand nuts it takes to put a plane up in the sky, and one loose nut to bring it down. It could be a pilot or it could be actual nut which you didn't put properly. So that is the importance of your job. So today you have come on a very uh, important day in your lives. Aviation has never been more important in the nations and in the world economy progress. As you have seen Elon Musk, many of you have heard about this world leader who is making heads turn. You would have noticed that he is firing rockets on a, on a monthly basis. But ISRO is not able to even understand what is happening. But he is able to use his team of technicians just like you to fire rockets up and soon men will be flying those rockets and it's so exciting that most of you will be a part of this journey which will soon be triggered off in India as well. So I feel that this is a very exciting moment of our evolution brother and I wish you all the best and I'm sure you will lead us into the skies. Thank you very much.
handing over of certificates to the graduates and request the dignitaries to distribute the certificate. Mr. Ravi Chandran and Mr. Vasab Chatterjee with the two students, please come with the list of the graduates. Thank you.